Hello, and welcome to PSO2. There's a subject people have been asking about that I've been avoiding for a long time, but I think it's finally time to talk about it. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I love your face. If you're new here, welcome, sit back, relax, and have a good time. My name is Nas, and today, I want to take a moment to teach you the basics of affixing. This video may be a little longer than usual, so grab a drink, get comfortable, and let's begin. I'll be covering most of the basics I can think about, but explaining every little detail of affixing may get a little too confusing, so take this guy as a way of getting started more than anything else. Before we really get into it, however, let me take care of a few important things that you should know. The act of affixing is transferring passive abilities of your choice to your weapon or armor. When you go to the third tab of your weapon details, that's where you'll see the current affixes on your weapon. Different affixes have different success rates when you transfer them to your gear, so that's important to keep in mind. An affix on your weapon will often be referred to as a slot. For example, this weapon has four affixes, or four slots. Adding a fifth a fix to your gear in this case would be called upslotting, which is just basically adding a fifth affix or slot to a four slot gear piece. Hopefully, I'm still making sense. It's important to keep in mind, however, that upslotting will add a penalty to your success rate when affixing. That penalty will also increase the more slots you add to your gear. Also, keep in mind that failure may also mean you'll downslot or lose one of your affixes, which is why you should never attempt upslotting with high value affixes in the mix. Fortunately, there are a few ways to increase your chances of success. I won't go over every single thing because we'd be here all night, but the most common ones you should know about are as follows. Some affixes are known as monster souls. There's a lot of them, and they're easy to spot because they'll always contain soul in their name. Elder soul, apprentice soul, fang soul, you get the point. Not only are souls great affixes by themselves, but they'll all boost the success rate of different types of affixes. For example, elder soul, which gives a bonus 30 tech power and 3 PP, will also boost the success rate of casting, spirit, and genius types of fixes. Mutation is another notable affix that will boost your success rate when affixing. But to demonstrate this, I also have to mention affix mutations. For example, if I have two weapons with precision 1, when affixing, I'll get the chance to transfer precision 2 to my weapon. This is called a mutation. And while precision 1 has a 100% success rate when affixing, adding precision 2 comes with a penalty. This is where mutation, the affix, comes in handy, as it will boost the success rate of transferring Precision 2 to my gear, as long as it's part of my synthesis. And before anyone asks, it just needs to be present in the mix. Mutation doesn't need to be transferred to your gear in the process. Some affixes, like souls for example, require multiple copies in your affixing process to be transferable. If this doesn't make sense yet, don't worry, I'll be showing an example later. However, there are affixes like Soul Receptor, which will remove that requirement. Adding Soul Receptor to your affixing recipe will let you transfer soul type affix without needing three copies. Also, some affixes when combined will become new ones. In the example I have prepared, I use the affix Arx Fever on three different weapons so it can become Arx Max. Finally, since I use a few of them in the example I'm about to show, I also want to mention secret ability factors, or SAFs for short. Every weapon has one, and they will become available to add as an affix to your gear as long as you enhance your main weapon to plus 35 and do the same to the weapon with the S ability you want to transfer. Secret Secret ability factors have a 100% success rate when affixing. If this doesn't make sense, it should make more sense in a bit when I show you an example. And this is as far as I'll get into the little hidden details of affixing for now. If you want to find out more after watching this video, and you feel like you understand it enough to start digging for more advanced affixing stuff, I highly recommend you do so after watching this video, played with affixing, and finally understand the basics, because there's a lot you can do here. With all of this mentioned, I'd also like to stress that be because of the downslotting chance I mentioned earlier, where failing could make you lose an important affix or slot, it is very important to plan your affixes before you begin. To do that planning, I highly recommend using the affixing simulator, link in the description below. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Now, to be able to use weapons in the affixing process, all weapons involved in the synthesis must have the same number of slots. Rarity or weapon types do not matter. The build I have planned for this video is a simple 5 affixes build, however, my Elder Rifle currently only has 4 slots, so my first step here will be to upslot my Elder Rifle from 4 to 5 slots. To do that, I'm buying 3 different trash weapons with 4 low level affixes. I'm looking for anything like Precision 1, Might 1, anything with a 100% success rate. Since I know I want my final build to have RX Max, and I also know that RX Fever has a 100% success rate, I make sure that one of my trash weapons is affixed with RX Fever. The 3 weapons I just bought are just food for my main weapon. Now 
now, I'll make my way to the item scientist and I will select the option to affix. I am selecting my elder rifle as my base weapon and then I select my three trash weapons as part of my recipe. The reason why we're using three weapons is because your success rate goes up with the more fodder weapons you use, capping at three weapons. But you can still use up to five weapons in the process, six if we count the base weapon. With all of my items selected, I can now select which affixes I want to keep or transfer to my main weapon. Notice how my success rate goes from 100% to 60% whenever I select my fifth option. Before I confirm, I use an affixing aid 30% to increase my chances of succeeding from 60% to 90% per affix. With my Elder Rifle at 5 slots, Arx Fever, and 4 other trash affixes that just serve as slots placeholders which we'll replace later, we're just using them to make the upslotting process cheaper and easier. It's time to prepare my fodder weapons. For the sake of this video, I'm buying everything on the player shops, but you can plan ahead and pick up items during missions. It's cheaper, but more RNG. So, knowing that my final build will look like this, I know that I will need the following. 3 trash weapons with 5 affixes. They all need Miser Soul, because you need 3 copies of a soul to transfer it as an affix, and 2 of them should have Arx Fever, because I need it 3 times to make Arx Max. My main weapon already has Arx Fever, making it the 3rd copy. I'll buy an affix item called Affix Augment Shoot and PP to add Noble Precision in the final affixing process, and the last 2 affixes, Precision 4 and Flick Tyro, are special ability factors that I get from making my Elder Rifle plus 35, and doing the same to an 11 star Missouri from the Photon Booster Shop. Since since I need to make fodder that has Miser's Soul and Arx Fever, I am buying 3 trash weapons with 5 affixes, one of them being Miser's Soul. Then I buy a 3 slot trash weapon with Arx Fever, because it's cheaper, I go ahead and buy 3 more trash weapons with bad affixes that have a 100% success rate to upslot the weapon with Arx Fever twice, making it 5 slot. Finally, I use the weapon with Arx Fever as a base and use the 3 weapons with Miser's Soul as food. In the affixing process, I select Arx Fever, Miser's Soul, and 3 other irrelevant lower level affixes and that's my first fodder done. I'll repeat the process of preparing fodder as many times as necessary. Remember that all we care about are the affixes that we want to transfer to our gear. Everything else is there to fill slots, since all weapons involved in the synthesis need to have the same number of affixes. With my Missouri at plus 35 as well as my Elder Rifle, it unlocks both of their secret ability factors, Precision 4 and Flick Tyro. Remember, secret ability factors have a 100% success rate while affixing. Okay. Okay, now I messed up a little bit while preparing this and made more work for myself than necessary. I prepared way too many fodders, but the important part is, before we perform the final affix, I have my base weapon, the Elder Rifle at plus 35, it has Arx Fever, and 4 other irrelevant affixes, making it 5 slots. It has the Precision 4 special ability factor. I have a Missouri M13 plus 35, with Arx Fever and 4 other irrelevant affixes, making it 5 slots. It has the Flick Tyro special ability factor. I have two trash weapons with Miser Soul, and four other irrelevant affixes, making it five slots, and finally, I have one more trash weapon with Miser Soul, Arx Fever, and three other irrelevant affixes, making it five slots. So now, I can finish my affixing build by speaking to the item scientist NPC. I select my Elder Rifle as my base weapon again, and confirm that I want to use my affix augment item, automatically adding Noble Precision as an affix. Then, I select all of my fodder weapons. Finally, I get the option to select what I want to add as affixes to my main weapon. Notice the special ability factors showing up there. I select Precision 4, Flick Tyro, Arx Max, and Miser Soul. Noble Precision is automatically added because of the affix augment item I used. I use an affix aid 40% to make everything 100% success rate, confirm, and we are done. Hopefully, all of this made a little bit of sense to you. But before I get going, let me give you a little more information to make your affixing journey easier. An affix like Flick Tyro has a very low success rate when it comes to affixing, using a weapon that has it as a secret ability factor, which always has 100% success rate, is a lifesaver. This is why we used it here. If you look in the Photon Booster Shop, you'll find the following weapons. The Missouri M13, which has Flick Tyro as a secret ability factor, boosting range power by 20 and providing a bonus 3 PP. The Sanj, which has Flicked Armor as a special ability factor, boosting melee power by 20 and providing a bonus 3 PP. And the Blade Stabilizer, which has Flicked Magia as a special ability factor, boosting tech power by 20 and providing a bonus 3 PP. Photon boosters are super easy to get in advanced quests, so there's no reason not to use these weapons to make your life easier. Next, if we look at the X-Cube shop, you'll see that you can trade in X-Cubes for Augment Aid 30 and 40%, which will definitely make your life easier when affixing. I'd also like to give a shout out to the challenge shop Revolts 
Ezio weapons, which come with five affixes slots, one of them being Soul Receptor, helping a lot with these soul transfers. And finally, if you find anything with Modulator, keep it. Modulator is a super good affix. It's also worth a lot of money. There's also this 13 star weapon that drops from the Independence Day Urgent Quest. Its special ability factor is Modulator, which is really hard to affix under normal circumstances. So keep an eye on that. Items with the Modulator affix usually drop from clones, which only spawns along the emergency code of the same name. So I would highly recommend picking up any drops from these enemies when they spawn. I'll leave a link to the wiki page with all the affixes you could ever wish for. This way, you can make informed decisions when keeping or selling gear. There's way too many for me to go through them all. Hopefully this guide can be useful to you, and I hope it wasn't too confusing. Affixing is a difficult subject to tackle, but I finally did it. And that should be it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's completely free, and it will let you know whenever I upload something new. This is Nostin Drum signing off, and I will see you next time. Love your face. <laughs>